Hello everybody, uh, my name is Moses and you're welcome to Stable Rock Farms. Uh, in today's episode, we are talking about our granuts. We have done our harvests and this is the final stage where we are peeling the granuts, as you can see. And uh, I just decided to make this video to just give you a rundown of every single thing we did from... Uh, planting to harvest i had uh, earlier dropped a video where i told you everything we were, we were going to do and now i'm going to show you what was actually done so uh let's go ahead and, and check out the video thank you we started by plowing the soil followed by tilling so we use the plow first and then a harrow uh, this is our tractor in action and uh, the aim of this to break the soil and make it very very good for uh, crops here is a look at the end result of our tractor work looks very good looks very even uh, the soil looks very loose this will all help in enabling our granites to grow well now down to the main event we used a seed planter to plant our granites this is a double compartment seed planter so there is a compartment for seeds and a compartment for fertilizer however we did not include the fertilizer in its compartment instead what we did was after planting with a seed planter we went ahead and broadcasted our ssp fertilizer in our farm so um, a day after planting we applied herbicide and what we applied was a mix of paraquat and pendolin so any paraquat based uh, herbicide which is quick action and any pendolin based type of um, herbicide so the paraquat is to kill all the weeds that are there already and the pendolin is to uh, restrict any emergence of weeds for a while and um, yeah that's that's what we did the seed planter did a great job and um, you'll soon see the results of uh, our planting after about six weeks uh, it was time to apply our post emergence herbicide and what you see here is the measuring of that herbicide you can go for any post-emergent herbicide that has the active ingredient imazetapir or imazamox any of those work and here is what our herbicide looks like after being diluted this is a six week um, granite farm This is what our granite farm looks like at two months. This is eight weeks and it looks very good. The leaves look very healthy. There's very little weeds. So our herbicide did a very great job. And you can just see it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's almost endless. And um, beautiful, beautiful. Here, it was um we're approaching two months and three weeks and we're basically just checking the granites to see uh the level it was at you know to see whether it was ready for harvest to see whether there were any pests that were uh disrupt the granites in the soil this test is good to be done about maybe once a week just you pull it out and you just check it's fine and this is finally 
uh, three months and a week, three months and two weeks actually. And we are currently harvesting our granites. And just as you can see, it's pulled from the soil and just kept in the pile. After harvesting comes threshing. So what is happening here is threshing of our granites. There are different methods at which this is done. Some people after harvesting let their granites dry because they find it easier to thresh that way. Some people use uh, machines, a thresher to thresh their granites. We are going with this method. So basically what happens with this method is that a group of people will harvest the granite and another group will follow suit and be threshing the granites that have been harvested. So uh, that is what is happening here right now. At the end of the day, after the granite has been threshed, uh, the granite will then be measured. And this is the method which is used to pay the workers. So based on how much granite has been threshed, you get paid. And this form of measurement is conducted, is carried out before uh, payment is done. After harvesting your granites and bringing it back to your location, next thing is to dry it. You know, your granite needs to be dried to a certain moisture level before you can comfortably uh, bag it or sell it or whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, if you don't dry your granites on time, what's going to happen is your granite is going to germinate. You don't want your granite to germinate so it needs to be dried and dried properly it's either going to germinate or it will get rotten either way uh, drying your granite is very important so that's what's happening here right now some people may use a dryer to dry their granites to reach the moisture uh, level that they are comfortable with. For us, this is the method we're going with. We're sun drying it. We sun dry it and bag it when it's done. What's happening here is that we're sieving the granites of all impurities, be it sand, be it stones, be it leaf stems or whatever it is. You take them out and make sure your granite is clean and fresh and once your granite is dry you have cleaned it uh you bag it and go on to the next level you can decide to shell your granite before selling because uh it provides more value for you you sell it for a higher price when your granite has been shelled and that's what's happening right now in this video and mind you uh the granite husk that you see that is the peels the waste that you see being blown away here 
there's a separate video i'm going to be bringing out that shows uh the uses of that trust me it's not going to waste and now your granite is ready for the market time to make some money this is the final stage prior to selling your granites you would have to transfer your granite to 50 kg sacks so these sacks are the sacks that are used for the final uh stage you know when you are ready to sell to your customer you transfer it to the appropriate sacks in this case the client brought their own sacks for us to transfer the granites to so we didn't even need to purchase any sacks they brought it we're transferring all of our granites to their sacks and we'll be good to go so this is going to be done for all of our granites we were able to plant on about 45 hectares of farmland for our granites we had an amazing beautiful season very great harvest and just one client purchased all of it so it's been a good year for us So that is everything about our granite farm, uh, as you saw in the earlier video. Uh, we had an amazing um, harvest, we had a great season. Um, we ended up planting way more granite than we had planned, but luckily we had uh, a lot of um, inputs and other uh, things on ground, so it was easy to 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 adjust our plants um we sold all of our granites uh so very good very good now a little lesson learned um series i'd like to do just discuss a few things we learned along the way no matter any farmer will tell you no matter how many times you farm you always learn something new uh with every season right so uh just a few pointers if you had watched an earlier video which I made that discussed everything where we were going to do on our granite farm I'll probably leave a link somewhere here for you to check out that video it talked about the seed the different types of seeds what we we're going to do and things like that so if you notice from that video you will notice that there were two um, different types of granite we planted two varieties one was called the banada one was called the Kampala. I don't know what it's called in your region where you are watching from, but I'll probably just show you what those two granites look like on the screen here. So these were the two that we uh, planted on our farm. Now we notice that uh, the banana uh, is an early maturing type of granite. It can mature in three months and a week three months and two weeks actually you can harvest at three months but if you want it to mature well so that your pods are good and you get very good yield you can wait three months and two weeks and you harvest and then with the kampala we notice that it takes at least four months if you want to have a very good yield you should even wait maybe like four months and a week plus right so if you are planning to uh, use this land this piece of land for something else after you harvest your granite then i suggest you go with the banana because it's a, a, it matures earlier than the kampala right that's one uh two we notice that the seeds of the kampala the one that matures late the seeds are much bigger you cannot even compare the seeds are bigger uh than the banana and then another thing we noticed is that the oil content of the Kampala is more than the Banada. So if your plan is to make maybe vegetable oil, granite oil from your granites, 
then I'll suggest you plant Kampala because it has a higher oil content than banana. Another thing is that because the seeds of the Kampala are bigger than those of the banana, it's easier to fill up the sack. So at the end of the day, you want to make a profit, right? So if you want to sell your seeds in sacks, then you want to put as few seeds as possible but still sell for a good price, right? So because the seeds, the kernels of the Kampala are big, they fill up the sack very fast. So you get more value that way, right? So that's uh, another tip, another pointer for you. Um, what else? What else? What else? I mean, these are the few things that we did. Oh, even, uh, even in uh, uh, the market, right? where people buy we notice at least from um, uh, in within our own locality here um, the kampala seems to be of higher value people people are more willing to purchase that than the banana it's it's even more expensive too not the, uh, honestly the difference isn't that much but still uh the kampala is a little more expensive than the banana now, uh, to round up this video, uh, is there any regrets? Uh, no. Uh, were we profitable? Yes. Uh, will we do this again next season? Yes. Um, is there anything we'll do differently next season? Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, we will probably involve a little more mechanization uh, next season and we'll find a way for the locals to be involved in that process if you noticed a lot of what we did were done manually uh, however we do have attachments with um, attachments for our tractors that can do some of this work right like the threshing uh, like even the harvesting we have a granite digger that can help harvest we have a multi crop thresher that can help thresh. Uh, all these are things that uh, are a way of mechanization, right? It helps, but in doing so, uh, the locals don't get as much work, right? Now, if if there's anything you've probably begun to notice from our videos is that we try to get the locals as involved in our farm as possible and i'm actually going to drop a video on that reason why we do that it's in fact it's one of the key to the success of our farm uh, because of the scale the size of our farm we just we feel like we need the natives the locals where our farms are located to be as fully involved as possible so that's why we don't involve as much mechanization so that they have more work to do uh, however next year we'll find a way to involve them yet still include some form of mechanization we'll see how that works out next year uh, next season what else what else what else uh, I think for now that's it uh, thank you so much for watching uh, I don't want to bore you uh, the video is beginning to seem like it's a little long so um, please like the video uh, the more likes you give uh, the more YouTube recommends the video to others uh, also subscribe so that you can see more videos from us uh, that's really going to help our channel grow as you know we're a young channel and we're just trying to break out and you know uh, get more involved on YouTube so your subscription goes a long way uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon